I'm a big fan of passive income and over the last two and a half years I've been building up my investment portfolio with over 15 dividend paying stocks and an average income of around 8% across my portfolio with some stocks paying as much as 15%. But it seems like the party is about to come to an end and after two years of grabbing great stocks at great prices with great dividends it seems like right now is the best and maybe last time for a while that we are going to see deals like the ones we've had over the last two years because there are changes happening in the market right now that may alter things for quite a long time. So in today's video, I'm gonna take you through exactly what is happening in the market at the moment and the big changes happening across the world right now that may make this your last great chance to stock up on dividend deals before it's too late and exactly what I've been investing in lately to take advantage of it while I still can. So let's get started. Right across the world, there are changes happening all over the place. South Africa had its first coalition government, the UK moved from Conservative to Labour Party, and in the USA things are heating up between another term under Donald Trump or what could be the first female US President Kamala Harris. But despite all of these change-ups in politics, there is an even bigger force at play right now that is moving the markets across the world. And although in some ways it's good, it also means time for certain investments might be running out. But first, let's touch on how the stock market works because right at the heart of it, underneath all of the complicated terms and figures and graphs, the stock market is actually a very simple machine and it's a machine that works purely on supply and demand. So what that means is if more people are buying a stock, the price goes up. And if more people are selling a stock, the price goes down. And as simple as that is, it's very important for what we talk about next. Because if a company like Nvidia releases good results, then more people will want to hop on the train and buy it. And when the demand goes up, there is less people wanting to sell. So the price goes up as a way to entice more sellers to meet the demand. And that is how the market regulates itself and essentially how it determines the price of the companies that we invest in. But, it's not always the financial results influencing whether millions of people around the world are buying stocks or not. In fact, one of the biggest influences on market prices around the world is interest rates. And if you don't believe me, just have a look at the market between 2022 and 2023 and overlay that graph with a graph of the USA's Federal Reserve interest rate in the same year. You'll see that right as the interest rates were going up, the market's price was tumbling down. And there are a few reasons for that. The first reason is that debt will get more expensive, so people will pull money out of the markets to pay down their debt. And the second is that positive interest rates on your savings accounts will go up too. So if you can get 8% on a savings account with no risk, then why would you invest in the market for a 3% dividend while stock prices are falling? And actually, that is a great time to invest, but that's another story. Generally around the world, when interest rates are rising, people are selling their stocks, and when interest rates fall, people start buying stocks. Because on the other hand, when interest rates are lower, people have more expendable income because you are paying less on your car and your mortgage, and you're earning less on your savings accounts. So when this happens, it starts to make more sense to move some money from cash to stocks, especially if interest rates might decrease further in the time to come. And that is exactly the problem and the reason for today's video, because all around the world right now, the tide is starting to shift and certain large and major economies are beginning to lower or consider lowering interest rates. And that is a danger for our precious dividend stocks. And here's why. Remember we said that market prices are based on supply and demand. Well, when interest rates were rising, people were selling and prices were coming down, which meant at the time we had cheap stocks and high dividend yields. Because a company pays dividends based on its profits, not its share price. So if the share price drops, it means you're getting that same income, but buying it at a cheaper price. So if McDonald's pays $10 a year and costs $100, that's a 10% dividend yield. But if the price drops to $50, that same $10 payment is now a 20% yield and you've just paid less for that same income. 
So if you're subscribed to the channel, you will know that I bought a lot of my stocks during 2022, and that's why I have a good portfolio dividend yield of over 8%, and why currently every single stock of mine is in a profit, except for Tesla. But this year, things are changing. Already around the world, we have seen interest rates starting to lower, with the UK reducing interest rates by 0.25% at its August meeting, along with Sweden and Denmark, and analysts are predicting a 76% chance that the USA will lower rates by that same amount in their September meeting. And often once the seal is broken, the rest of the world tends to follow. Now, first keep in mind that none of us really knows for certain what will happen. Jerome Powell could make a different decision or economic conditions could change from now until the meeting, but this is the largest percentage chance we've seen so far to lower rates since they started rising. And with the UK and the Eurozone making its first reductions, the chances are high, yet not certain. But even if it's not this month or the next, it seems that we are reaching the point where inflation is returning to normal levels and gradual interest rate cuts are an almost certainty within the next year. So, for your stock portfolio, that's often a good thing. But for dividend yields, it can have a different effect. Because as rates come down and people look for better places to put their money to earn higher returns, they turn to dividend stocks. If interest rates start coming down, more people will turn to buying dividend stocks to get a steady return on their money and the price of dividend stocks will go up. Even in just the last few months, some of my biggest dividend stocks have seen major share price growth. Octodec is up 18%, IG Group is up 35%, Realty Income is up 20%, Simon Property Group is up nearly 50%, and all my banks are as much as 50% as well. And while we're talking about stock holdings, if you don't know, we have a page on Patreon called The Casual Cash Club, where I share all of my stock buys and sells in real time on the day it happens with all of the reasons why. So if you join as a member, you get access to all of that and also Excel sheets to track your investment and dividend returns, two free eBooks, and monthly portfolio updates with the real dividend income each month. I also give my thoughts on stocks and the market, and I answer all the comments and questions. Currently, my six-figure portfolio has every one of my 16 holdings in profit, except for Tesla, with some around 50% gains, and the portfolio makes five figures a year in dividends at around 8%. And I'm not saying every stock will be a profit, but if you want to get some insight into what I'm buying and why, and maybe get some inspiration or ideas for your own portfolio, then consider joining the club. And best of all, there is a seven day free trial, so you get access to all of that for free, and then see if you want to continue in the club with our other 162 members. Just click the link in the description to use your seven day free trial, and we'll see you there. So while recent movements have been great for my share prices, it means the availability of high dividend deal stocks may slowly start coming down as prices start coming up. When I bought Simon Property Group, its dividend yield was a bit over 6%, and now since its share price growth, the dividend is currently at 4.8%. Now that's still a good dividend yield that I'm happy to buy, but as we sit here now in September, before the USA Federal Reserve meeting and the possibility of interest rates starting to come down, if not in this month, then perhaps by the end of the year or next year, we may see the high dividend yields of the last two years start to slowly come to a close and return back to their historical levels in the USA of typically around 3%. So for me personally, I have started to increase buying of my favorite long-term dividend shares and to stock up on some good dividend yields in anticipation of a possible lower interest rate environment in the years to come. None of us have a crystal ball and there is certain economic data showing that we may see a downturn coming along with the interest rate decreases because of the effects of two years of high interest rates have had on consumers and businesses before those lower rates take effect. And that's why, as always, it's a good idea to continue to dollar cost average regularly into your portfolio, topping up your shares every week or month during both the good and the bad times. And for me personally, I'm going to be doing that same method without any large or outrageous purchases, but I'm going to choose some of my long-term dividend stocks in the month to come to top up when I'm dollar cost averaging and doing my weekly or monthly purchases. 
By doing this, I can get the most of my passive income portfolio during a high interest rate market before we start to see interest rates slowly coming down. And guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed a bit of insight into interest rates, the market, and how it affects your dividend stocks in the time to come. If you enjoyed this, please like the video and subscribe to see more, and be sure to check out your seven day free trial for the Casual Cash Club in the description. But until then, I'll see you guys next time, as always, on Casual Cash. Cheers.